So I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the Laguna guides. Now these are the guides that are on the top. There's an equivalent on the bottom, although their mount is a little bit different on the bottom. So I'll show you that later. There's a, uh, well, there's actually a piece of white paper behind here because with my finishing cabinet behind, it was really too much, too busy for you to be able to tell what I was pointing at. So there's a, of course, here's a column in the back that's for setting the blade height. So it's just on a rack and pinion. And at the bottom of that guide is a large block of aluminum that has two holes, two threaded holes. Now those are the holes for these cap screws that you see through this acrylic guard that's in the front. Now the guard is only on the top guides. The bottom guides do not have it. Now there are also at the bottom, you know, there's the big machined piece of aluminum back here. The rod that, or the flat plate that comes out with these threaded holes to hold the front has two cap screws as well. So you can advance the whole unit if you you know, need to get more reach. And of course, that's because it's made actually for several different types of saws, and that just happens to be how it's mounted on this LT18. So the guides themselves are shaped kind of like little C. There's a C here and a C there. And what you see at the top is you see some white uh, ceramic rods at the top. Now, that I mean, they're flat plates that are mounted inside the guides. Those are consumables. Of course, they uh, are expected to last quite a long time, but you do eventually have to replace those. And you can see that they're kind of shaped like they're in a dovetail way. So you'll just slide that out of the out of the C and slide the new one in. And you can get full replacement kits from Laguna. Now there is also a fifth one in there. If you were to take a look down the center, so right in there, there's a round white circle. That's a round cylinder of ceramic that's mounted from behind. It just pushes up and that holds the back of the blade. Now it actually touches the blade, so the blade is riding on it constantly. Uh, but it doesn't really wear. It will wear over time. The other ones wear, wear much slower, but that one wears more over time. But occasionally all you have to do is loosen this knob here, and then you can give it a twist to make sure that you're using a new area. And then, of course, this moves back and forth. Right now I'm bumping it to the back of the blade. Now my blade is fully tensioned. I've tracked it already. So this is the time to do the setup for the guides. Now I've actually already done it. I don't know, five, six times. So I'll show you how I've done it. There's probably a hundred ways, but this is just how I personally have done it. Now, one thing I wish that they did have, because this acrylic guide is in the way, it's really hard to grab this C. You can't grab it and pull it out. So you tend to be able to push it towards the blade, but you can't pull it or pull it away if you needed to retract it very easily. And since this is just in a slot on the C, it's not like you can move the screw to make it slide over. So let me show you how I do the adjustments. Now initially, when you first get the saw, you're gonna to wanna to just tighten up one of these so that you can have it snug against the back plate and then take a look and see where the blade lands. Now, of course, you're also gonna to wanna to loosen this one that goes to the back piece, pull it back. So now the blade is sitting in its natural position and you wanna see where the ceramic lines up. You want it at the bottom of these gullets. Now mine turns out that that's basically where it was. So I didn't even have to do any adjustments. If you did need to, there are two cap screws back here that you can't see on the camera. You would just loosen those and then this entire plate assembly that holds this can be advanced or retracted. So you can do that until you get it to the right position, tighten those back up, and then continue where we're gonna start. So assuming you had to do those, what you're gonna do is just make sure all these are loose, including the one that's in the back. Just tap the thing until it comes up and touches the blade. So now there's, it's touching the blade. Tighten it up, we're done with that. Now we have these other C's to take care of. Now, the way I do it is on the, now you have to excuse my reach, this is an awkward angle to do this at. The C that's on the inside of the cut is the first one that I, I do. What I do is I simply push it until it touches the blade. You don't push so hard that you're deflecting the blade. Just push it till it's up against the blade and then start to snug it up. Right now it's snug and it's still just touching the blade, I believe. Let me take a peek. <laughs> yes. Again, hard from this angle. So now I've tightened it down. So now we can even see by pressing on the blade, it's not deflecting to that side. Of course, to this side, it can still deflect. Again, I have this blade already at full tension. So now this one here is loose. The idea is that you want to be able to put a scrap of paper in there so that you can run the blade. What I do is I double the paper. So let me stick this paper in there. And 
There we go. Now it's a lot easier. I press till it's touching. Now, of course, this is tight to pull out, but I actually had an extra piece of paper. So this is generally how I've been doing it, and I have much better success. So I can pretty easily get that in there. And I'll be able to do the same up above. Now, let me move this wheel so we can hear if there's any bumping. No, nope, I'm not hearing any bumping from the weld, so to me, I'm happy. Now, one thing about this, though, take a look at the front of the blade. So what you can't see is that the very front of the blade can move just a little bit. What this is, is in the case of my guides, is that in a way, the I'm sure all this is machined very well, so it's very square, but the problem is this piece, these pieces of ceramic on this side here tend to be angling away from where the blade is. So what I found, and I was playing with this before, is that I take a, piece, a little piece of paper, two pieces, and I sneak it in back here before I clamp that up. And what it'll do, of course, it'll tip the front forward. So then I can get it to the point where there's virtually zero play over here, but then the back has just a little bit more than maybe it had before. Honestly, the kerf is what I don't want moving. The back, it, you know, it's gonna be hopefully in the, in the saw kerf, it won't be a problem anyway. So let me do this change now. Sneak this back in there. Now, I experimented with it, and I put two sheets in. Turns out one might work for you, or maybe none. Again, I'm going to go double on the paper because I want that to uh, let me get the uh, weld. There we go. It's right on the top ones. I'll sneak in double here. I have to admit, the acrylic guide makes this, or guard makes it a little bit awkward to get at it. So now that's in. Have the piece in the back. Lightly tap on it till I keep it uh, kind of touching the blade. Cinch it down. Yes, this is on the tight side to pull out. Go back to one, take a look. And you can see I can get a sheet in there. I can get a sheet in there actually fairly easily. It's not, not super easy, but now let's test out the sound of the weld. So these are the guides on the bottom. Same idea, same attachment. A lot easier to do just because you can hang on to it from the side, which is why I really got to get myself a screw for that other one. This one here, I felt the need to put two pieces of paper on this one side as well to make it come in and touch. So I have very little play on the front. There is also a knob on this side, in this case here, for setting the one that's in the back. So the idea is that you can use the two cap screws down here, loosen it up to move these up and down where you want them placed. Now, of course, I want them as close to the top as possible. So I put the fence back on because I want to show you something with the guides. And uh, you'll see very easily, I still have it unlocked to be able to set the drift. It's not locked into place, but you can see how easy even a large fence like this moves. Now, one thing I did do, you can set the height of this fence right you set this you set this portion that runs on the guide uh, according to the table now normally you would think set it dead flat what I did is I left just a small small gap here so that the contact point is on the far far end so in a sense there's a really small gap here and only contacts on the far end it makes moving this fence so much easier let me unlock it so we can uh, move it <laughs> You can see how easy that is to move. You just give it a light push. Normally, a fence this heavy, when it was all the way down on the table, it was very, very difficult to move. So keep that in mind. What I'll show you now is this. I I have the fence 90 degrees to the table, so the table is you know basically a perfect reference. Everything is going to be moving. But one thing that's interesting to do is as I loosen up this guide column, See if you can watch the blade. It's actually going to be very difficult for you to see on that. As this is going up, the blade is doing this. It's fluttering. There's different positions on here. It depends on where it is in the rack and pinion, depending on how it kind of moves the whole column. 
back and forth. So that's generally going to affect your 90 degree placement. So setting this up once is not going to work for you. You're going to have to recalibrate your table, the blade to the table, every time you go to do a big tall resaw. If if you know a lot of good accuracy is what you need if you're doing very very thin veneers you're going to need that accuracy like right here it looks pretty good there's a very 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 small gap on the bottom that you won't be able to see if i continue moving this up see how the gap opened up there we go So at this point, I have it just above this, this uh, it's like an 11 inch square. It looks pretty good. There's a small gap on the bottom though, and it's touching at the top. Now as I loosen this up and let me raise it, you'll notice that it changes. Now all of a sudden, the gap, there's a gap at the top and at the bottom. If I scoot this over, the gap on the bottom is now smaller. If I continue up, you can actually see it flutter at this point. There's a flutter, actually a pretty big one right there. So my point is, is that you may not be able to see this very well on the camera. If you need to have really good accuracy for the 90 degree of the blade to the table, you're going to want to have to readjust it almost every time. Now there is a really large handle on the other side and you can, you know, unlock the table, lean on that handle, get it till it's just perfect and then lock the handle very easily. In fact, despite the fact that this table is easily double the weight of the table I had on my previous 14 inch saw, it's very easy to calibrate the table. So I was very happy about that. So just keep that in mind. 